Welcome back to Grednald and Cascade Division in Nscale. My name is Ian, and in this video, we're exploring signaling. The whole series of videos where I go into some different products that I am exploring to use on the layout here, or start to get some ideas as if I'm going to have to end up building something myself. So, in this first video, we're going to look at the Signal Animator 2 from Logic Rail Technologies. Met these guys out at TrendFest a few weeks ago. I think it was Chuck from uh, Logic Rail Technologies. This board does exactly what it says on the tin and on the packet. It provides very basic uh, animation of LEDs. You can use photocell sensor, which is what I'm doing to detect this trend moving through. You can do IR sensors either between the rail or across the rail. Um, it can take a range of power input sources as well, I think from 7 volts to 16 volts DC. Uh, it can do such like LEDs or it can do regular um, three aspect uh, signal heads. So again, it's, it's somewhat configurable in what it can do, but it is just doing a very basic delay in terms of sequencing through the lights. It's not doing any kind of block detection. It doesn't have the ability to look at multiple different sensors and see when you've transitioned from one phase to the next. Uh, it doesn't give you the ability to chain these together to do something like that, where you could have one board that's got the signal heads and then another board a little bit further down. And so as you go from one to the next, it then says, okay, you've passed the second board. And so now the first board can show a yellow. And then when you've passed the third board, then the first board can show a green again. It, it can't do that kind of stuff. But if you just want basic animation of signaling, this is really, really good. Um, a little bit of a spoiler. I'm not sure if I'm going to end up using it on my layout, but let's go and have a little look and see what it can do and uh, do remember to like subscribe and follow along so you can see the rest of the videos coming up in the series on signaling next video i'm going to be looking at one of the as track boards that can do all the signaling and logic around a turnout um, and then i've got a couple of the little things up my sleeve that i'm going to be exploring as well just to see if i can find something off the shelf commercially that's going to work at the scale of something like this triple deck layout so let's go and check out this board and uh, see what we think so this is the Signal Animator 2 from Logic Rail Systems. I found these guys at TrendFest a few weeks ago. I think it was Chuck that I was talking to. And fairly simple board that they have, and it's designed to do pretty much exactly what it says on the tin. So this particular version is for um, three light LEDs using a common anode. I think they have versions that do a common cathode. Um, this is also including a photo cell sensor. You do make one that has a couple of IR sensors, and so that can either be through the rail um, IR sensors or it could be like a cross uh, the track IR sensors. I went with the photo cell one because it was cheaper, uh, and two just because I wanted to kind of check this out. But it is designed just to be a very basic signal animator, and they were very open and upfront about this in terms of you know there's nothing inherently built in for desi churning them together and things like that. There's nothing inherently built in for block detection and things like that. It is just very much set up so that if you want some kind of animation, as you would cycle through the signal states on a on a light, you can do that just with the basic photocell or IR sensor. So on the left-hand side, you have power coming in, you have a connection for whatever type of sensor that you actually want. Over on the right-hand side, you then have uh, the green, red, yellow LEDs. And again, this is a uh, common anode. So you do then pull off from the five volts over here. Dip switches to uh, decide if you're gonna be doing like searchlight signals or if you're just gonna be doing a regular three aspect signal hand, which is what I'm gonna kind of be testing out. Can also set a delay. On the signals appear a little potentiometer that you can set. So uh, when the sensor gets triggered, you know, how long does it wait before it goes from red to yellow and then to green? And there is also another little um, potentiometer here that you can change to adjust the sensitivity for the photo cell sensor. So I'm going to wire this up just with some little basic uh, LEDs. These are little 603 SMD LEDs. Just because I want to kind of give these a try, I'm, I'm looking at trying to 3D print and build my own signals but that's a little bit of a separate fight and separate video so i'm going to wire up some um, of those leds i'm going to get connected into my accessory bus here on the layout um, this i think can do a pretty wide variety i'll double check the instructions but it was a fairly wide variety of the input voltage it can take so my 12 volt accessory bus certainly falls well within that and we'll have a look and see how it actually then works this is with that signal animator 2 hooked up and i had a problem with my microphone when i first recorded this and so now that i've kind of tried to re-record it and actually running through the breadboard to try and make it a little bit more uh more professional 
no longer have the red LED going, which is a little bit puzzling. I've tried multiple LEDs. Um, I've tried switching out jump wires and uh, and stuff like that. So the idea is that, like I said, on the left hand side, you've got power coming in from the bus, and then I've got my photo cell sensor connected in here. Uh, I am then pulling off five volts to the LEDs themselves, and then over here where we would have our uh, the other screw terminal block, um, green, red, yellow, is a little bit annoying in my mind. The the let the the I guess sequence of those colors because that's not the sequence of any signals that I've ever seen green red yellow um, but okay I was probably something to do with the layout on the board so they then come over into the breadboard and so right now it's sitting on green because you are able to pass through if I kind of use the finger of God to cover the photo cell this red LED should be lit up and it was lighting up before and I'm going to put up a little bit of the video clip, even though there's no audio with it, to show that it was working. And the idea is that when you would take your finger away, it will then cycle to yellow, and then it will cycle to green. So quite right why I no longer have any red control, I'm not sure. It is a little bit puzzling. Uh, but just to prove that the delay thing does work, um, if we crank it up a little bit, do the finger of God covered, assume that a trend is passing over the top of this and release it. Now it will take quite a while before it's going to switch to yellow, and then it's going to take a little bit longer before it switches to green than it had done before. And we can crank this all the way up, even let's like crank it way up. Finger of God cover over, let go, and so could be 15, 20 seconds before that goes to yellow. The idea is that you would mount the sensor between the rails on the track. And so that's probably what I would be doing just with a single photo cell uh, if I went this direction. Dip switches didn't need to change, although I do like that uh, you can configure them a little bit more. It doesn't really help me because I'm only ever going to use a three aspect signal head or maybe it's a two aspect signal head. And so being able to do the searchlights, there we go. It's finally triggered over to yellow. It would be a lot easier to see the visualization if it was red. But this will go from yellow to green in, in the same time. So I do like that you can adjust that. Um, but yeah, I'd, I, I'm never going to use the searchlights. I get why they did it. I would much rather have had dip switches where I could have had this select between a two aspect signal head or a three aspect signal head that would have been a bit more useful i do like the idea though that you can adjust the sensitivity of the photo cell sensor as well and then we go we finally go to green by using that delay option so there are some really good things about this and again it does exactly what it says on the board itself exactly what it says in the instructions it is a signal animator it provides very very basic animation and that's really as far as it goes there's not more logic built into it than that. It isn't figuring out block detection. It doesn't desi chain together and do different sequences. It's very much just, hey, you want to provide basic signaling? This, this will do that for you. I knew that coming in, and so I think that's why um, this probably isn't going to get used on the layout. Um, maybe, you know, it's very specific instances, but for the most part, it's not really providing enough of what I want. I love the simplicity. I love the very basic action that it provides. If I could figure out why it no longer does red, it would be even better. But I, I still feel like for what I'm going to be doing, especially because I'm going to be having videos and stuff, that it's going to look a little bit weird if I use the signal animator too, or let's say as you would come, uh, on that north exit from King Street Station, entrance or exit from King Street Station. If you, uh, you are looking at a train that's ready to depart north, then it's going to have a green light as it would then move forward and, and you know come to the mouth of the tunnel. It would then trigger to red. And then, you know, once it's cleared it, that delay will then make it go to yellow, will then make it go to green. So that would look somewhat prototypical. But if you were looking at the northbound track from King Street Station, and you have a train coming in, you know, you've got an arriving train, then it's still going to show green, even though there's, there's something there. And so that's, that's where it kind of falls down. It doesn't do the block detection. I did test um, wiring another set of LEDs like opposites so that um, red was connected to the green input and green was connected to the red input so I could have 
um, two signal heads running so you could kind of simulate the lights on the other end and that worked as well uh, but then again it was still a little weird in that you were going to have this automatic transition based on the delay that you set so that if you were watching you would see it go to red when something had tripped the photocell sensor and was in that area but then it would go away so again i i kind of suspected that's how this would go with this signal animator too it's not at all a knock on logic rail technologies and again this is not a review or a how-to this is just me going through different options that are available i like the photocell i think that works pretty well and it's a fairly low cost way of doing it i like having some of the potentiometers and so again as i look forward what am i looking for in a product or if i ultimately end up probably having to build my product i like having adjustments like that so i don't have to do it in code and i like having screw terminals and dip switches so that again i can program things so a lot of good things from this board does exactly what it, it's meant to do um so if you're wanting just basic signal animation this works really well and in two or three minutes everything gets screwed in and ready to go if you had an actual commercial signal head rather than just you know three little leds that i have like this this would work great um, I'm going to move on in the next video, look at the Ezatrack solutions or one of the Ezatrack solutions to control signal heads around a turnout. That I think starts to get a little bit more useful than what I'm trying to do. This though is just a little bit too basic and it doesn't give me the flexibility of controlling the other end of the signal head um, with some kind of block detection. So great for animation. Um, I love some of the features like the potentiometers for sensitivity and delay and dip switches for configuration. They're definitely things that are going to be on my want list if I build something myself. Um, and for right now, you know, I might find some use on the layout, but this probably isn't something that you're going to see a whole lot more of. Again, not to say that it's a bad product by any means, just for my uses and go back and Look at the first video in the series as to what I need signaling to do. Um, this isn't quite fitting the bill, but it's getting me part of the way there. And it is at least cool to see some lights. So hopefully this has been somewhat useful. Thanks for watching. Um, and remember, do like, subscribe, and follow along so you can see the rest of the videos coming up in these series as I keep exploring signaling like this. Bye-bye.